So they're downloading things constantly, especially as they're being revised. For example, you can see the second login is called Verify Activity. So the students procrastinate and do their work in the days and weeks right before the major deadlines. Not terribly surprising. Important to know. So now I know that student, what students did, generally how they did it, and when they did it. Um, I'm also, also interested to see what were some of the potential factors that influenced whether students were able to have their online activity distinguished from that basic interaction, program and collaboration, and knowledge construction. So there are a variety of different factors that I discuss in my, in my dissertation, but I really want to just talk about a couple of them very quickly here. So one of the ones I want to talk about is face-to-face -face meetings. I asked students in the survey how often they met face-to-face, -face, and this is from the final, the second survey. And you can see that 80% of students report they met face-to-face -face at least once a week. Why, why are they reporting such high? Well, because they all live here. 85% of students live either within walking distance to campus or in university-owned housing. So it's not a big deal for them to say, hey, you know, 9 to 3, 10 o'clock at night, let's meet at the library, let's meet at a student lab, and you know, let's bang this, this, bang this thing out. So what are they talking about in that Because I couldn't be at the face-to-face -face meeting, so what are they talking about in that Well, they talked about a variety of different things. They discussed uh, similar things that they discussed, you know, what they accomplished, different articles that they were downloading and gathering, uh, particularly for their summary proposal that we do, um, and how to tackle new experimental problems. Uh, they're, ta they're talking about different aspects of the projects. So lots of different things they're talking about, and it's not hard to imagine that there is a lot of different collaboration and potentials and knowledge construction happening in those face-to-face -face meetings. But what? But I don't necessarily know that because I don't have that evidence, so that's something to explore, you know, in the future. So why did the group meet face-to-face -face instead of having the same discussions online? Now, there's all these great tools for them provided. Why aren't they doing it online? Well, students basically thought that it was easier to communicate difficult concepts in person and also ensure that the group members were on task. Uh, well, because you can imagine if people are all online, they're all on their laptops or their computers, they could be you know, looking at Facebook, they could be IMing, doing all these other things at the same time as being with their group. So they may not you know, necessarily be on task for if they're face-to-face -face in front of you and say, you know, what are you running, Stephanie? And why aren't you listening? So the other thing I want to mention is that stu through student activity and through uh, my observation of their use of the LMS, we did, I did notice some problems and, uh, as well as some limitations with the LMS. Some of the problems that students mentioned were overwriting files, so they upload them, they would accidentally overwrite their files inside of the resources tool. There'd be a delay in the chat where they'd post something and then they would let someone would reply, but they wouldn't see it for a minute or two. There's also a software bug going at the same time. And there's also limitations in the tool. tool. Uh, since talked about being, not being able to do certain things within their tools, um, not being able to draw or be able to access other websites very easily while they're also chatting or doing an online discussion. So they, they were not necessarily rich enough, and they also lacked a bunch of flex, uh, lacks a user controlled flexibility allowed for students to basically say, you know, I want to bring in this little applet that I use all the time on the web. I know it's free and I can't drag that into the LMS as easily. And one of the things I'm, I noticed is that tools really lack scaffolds to support collaboration knowledge construction. And that's something that I'm going to mention a little bit more in a second here. And um, Here's one example. So this is one group that talked about that biology is a very visual discipline. So it's not surprising um, that they get the kind of comments that they want to be able to draw online. And they just they start to get frustrated when, you know, if I can just draw something instead of trying to you know, write five paragraphs to explain it, you just draw it, make sure you're going to get it and we can move on. So that really reflects a lot of flexibility in tools. Within the LMS. So very quickly to sum up, um, most of the activity online um, was coded as basic interaction and there was some collaboration going on as well, but knowledge construction was not as evident within the results. Um, resources was by far the most used tool, but students did also use interactive tools like announcements and chat. 
and students procrastinate again. And there are also a variety of factors affecting students, uh, affecting the distinction between um, those, those forms of peer interaction, whether it can be further distinguished from basic interaction and collaborative knowledge construction. A variety of factors affect, uh, you know, that could potentially be influencing those. So if it's not happening within the LMS, where is knowledge, where is knowledge construction? It could be possibly in the face-to-face -face meetings. And why isn't it happening in the LMS? It could be due to uh, the co-location students. They're all here, uh, you know, within, you know, within basically the Ann Arbor area. Um, it could be due to group dynamics. It could be technical technological limitations. It could be others that I'm just not aware of. But it is important to note that usually within the LMS, in terms of courses, there's usually an instructor there to provide the scaffolding, to provide monitoring and coaching, and guidance for students. And if there is no instructor present, the system is incumbent to require the include the scaffolds that support students' collaboration and knowledge construction. And there was one group I want to mention very quickly, because I'm starting to run out of time. Um, that uh, was able to have some evidence knowledge constructed. There's 10 units overall, and one group had seven of them. This is group D, and this group overall was fairly active. They used the system not only for their grant proposal assignment, but also their other course assignments, like their lab assignments, and different things that also required as part of the course. And early in the term, the group could not meet face to face. Um, you can imagine six students, five of them were seniors. They were pretty dispersed. Some were doing sports, some were doing activities. One person was uh, at a conference, a <coughs> job thing. So they tried to meet online using the chat tool. And there was some evidence that was constructed during those chat sessions. But as they kept going, this really turned into this cost benefit thing. The group thought it could benefit from the interactive tools because of the non location. But the cost of the lack of scaffolds and the flexibility, uh, this is one of the groups I mentioned, the drawing capability. They really started to outweigh those benefits. So eventually the group just resorted face-to-face -face meetings. They you know, brought back from the sports and they found more time where they could meet face-to-face -face and not have to struggle with online tools much. So one of the questions I have is what could have helped Group D and others who wanted to use the LMS for collaboration and knowledge construction? And one of the things I think that could help them are some sort of scaffolds. The scaffolds are a, way, are a term of education that we use to help facilitate um, the elaboration of knowledge construction. And it helps facilitate, um, one type of scaffold is facilitating productive planning and monitoring, monitoring of reflective practices. And over time, this should fade so students can, make, can maintain control of their learning. So one potential type of scaffold is uh, Jean Lane talked about question prompts that help students engage in deep learning <coughs> processing. So you imagine that next to your chat session, you might have some suggested prompts like this is an example of this, or why is that point important? Just things to help guide students along but as they're discussing different topics. Um, in addition to those types of scaffolds, they can have also have sample conversations via pop-up windows or an example of videos, because videos are more and more common these days. So there's lots of different types of scaffolds that are possible. And it really requires further research um, to explore how best to scaffold collaborative knowledge construction within the LMS. And um, starting to run out of time, but there's also other types of scaffolds that are possible to help reduce cognitive load. Um, one of the problems that I discussed earlier is the lack of flexibility. So you could have user-controlled look and feel options um, that could allow students to you know, pop in iframes or even just general mashups. Right now, um, it's required by the administration to have, be able to have two columns as it looks in the LMS. What if that was user control and they could decide, you know, one column is a chat tool, the other column is an online free drawing tool, and that, that one of those groups' problems is solved. The other problem is blank slates. Um, within the LMS, everything is just blank. You, you turn on a wiki tool, there's nothing there and you have to, every time you have to create from scratch. So one way is to kind of reduce cognitive load for learners might be to have some templates, for example, folders or example, page formats. So um, different ways, you know, for them to maybe say, you know, here we want to construct, you know, uh, what a brainstorming page might look like. So that's why you have to start from scratch. In terms of the LMS, 